Hi and welcome to the vlog. Today I am going to visit some yarn shops in Paris and I thought I would take you along with me. So let's go. I'm wearing my Levitate wrap by my favorite things knitwear and I am going to go to brunch with my sister first um, but then I am hoping to visit at least three yarn stores maybe maybe two but if I am feeling courageous three so we shall see let's go Hi, so I'm back home. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think I'm a very good vlogger. I tried to film a few clips, hopefully uh, enough for you to see. Uh, I ended up going only to two yarn shops because the third one was closed uh, and it didn't open until 3 p.m. Sorry, and I wanted to go home and knit. <laughs> so yeah, I uh, so. The first yarn shop and also it was a bit gloomy and raining like not heavy rain but just the kind where i don't know if you have glasses you'll know what i mean but it's just annoying and i forgot my umbre umbrella so 
Yeah, I didn't really want to go to to go all over Paris, but the two yarn shops that I went to are very close by. They're only a 16 minute walk between them. Uh, so that was really nice and I joined my sister like right in the middle of the tree yarn shops to go to brunch so I filmed a few clips of that that was really good I've been there that that was my third time going there and it's really good it's called Clint so in case you're ever going to Paris it's a really good quite pricey but it's Paris um, really good brunch and then the first yarn shop that I went to was Little Weasel um, it's got like two parts. The first one is like commercial yarns, so you had a lot of uh, Phil Colana, which was really nice because I've never seen Phil Colana before. So there was Phil Colana, there was some Derum Natura, um, they only had Ulysse and Gilia, but that was really nice to see in person as well. Although I already have some Ulysse in my stash, but the Gilia was really nice to see. Then there was Fonti, which is a French brand. Um, you had some Cascade yarns, what else, some Cardiff Cashmere and, oh I don't remember, there was another one, uh, but I'll pop, pop, pop up, sorry, oh I already have some pictures, I, <laughs> I didn't buy anything, there, I bought something at the second yarn shop, uh, but, like I, I maybe wanted to buy some Cardiff, some some cashmere, sorry, to make a a bralette, but I don't know. Cashmere is expensive, so I didn't really want to spend too much. And then I was thinking maybe of buying some Tilia from Phil Colana, which is like their mohair and silk blend, um, because I've never tried it, and I thought. You know, it's fairly the same price as uh, Knitting for Olive or Sandless Gown Mohair, which I've tried before. Um, and it, it felt nice and yeah, I wanted to try it, but I was I didn't I didn't have a merino in mind to pair with it. And I didn't want to buy merino as well as the mohair because that would have been, again, expensive. Um, and uh, there wasn't like a clear color that I wanted for a sweater that I want to cast on in the near future, so I didn't buy anything. But I think for my next big yarn purchase, I will definitely go there to buy some Tilia and a merino to pair with it. Not sure which one because the other Phil Colonna yarns that they had was Merci and Arveta, which are superwash merino and I don't really want to buy superwash merino if I can um, avoid it and if it's not hand dyed so yeah that was the first part of the shop and then you could go um, on a cross because basically it's like it's not in the street it's in a passageway anyway so you could go across and there was some hand dyed yarn so there was la bien aimée they have their own yarns, which so it's called Little Whistle as well, and a few others I don't remember. Um, but mostly it was Superwash Merino or La Bien Aimée, but La Bien Aimée is very expensive, so I didn't want to buy anything um, on that side. Um, and they also had some fabrics, if you're a sewer, maybe that would have been uh, fun. And they had a lot of knitting notions like needles and uh, knitting books and everything so yeah I think that's definitely going to be a yarn shop that I visit again and purchase from so I really recommend and then the second yarn shop that I went to is called Les Tricoteurs Volants um, and that was a really the first one it was really small as well but the second one was even smaller but it was really nice uh, I think it's just one guy who owns it and he had a good uh, selection of yarn. He had some um, BC garn, BC, yeah, BC garn, uh, some, what's it called? Oh, I'll show you in a moment because I bought some. <laughs> um, I don't remember what he had, but I'll put it on the screen or you can see maybe in the shots, but I'll show you what I bought. 
So he had some, oh, the fiber company. So he had the Cam Cambria fingering and he had the law from the fiber company. I really wanted to buy the law because um, Rebecca Klo from the Crabea, uh, she talked about how law is a really good yarn for color work. I don't have any plans for color work sweater in the future except for the porcelain sweater, but then that will be later when I'm feeling more confident. Um, and I don't think I want to use law for that, but I really was keen to try the yarn. Um, but the colorway that I wanted, he, he only had one skein of it, so I was thinking, ah, never mind. But I purchased this one. This is the Cumbria Fingering, which is 90% wool and 10% mohair. It's made in Peru and it's 100 gram for 300 meters. And it is this. Excited, I don't, I don't know if you can see. Uh, what is that colorway called? I'm not sure actually. Oh, sorry, it is Blancathra or colorway Cuff 120, maybe. And yeah, so it's like a, a very like gray beige, but not wantoned uh, because I'm not a fan of grey but I think this is really really pretty and the law the fiber company law that I wanted was similar to this and then the other one that he had he had a couple of colorways but they were really bright colors or there was a grey but I don't like grey so yeah I bought this uh, it's not like the softest thing obviously and the drape isn't there <laughs> but which is you know the test that uh rebecca Clo does to see if a yarn has drape she holds it like this and then if it falls and it's got drape even if it doesn't it doesn't um but anyway so this is a fingering it's recommended to use with a 2.25 or 3.25 millimeter needles or like from ranging from there to there but I feel like it's quite I don't know I feel like it's a bit thicker than that maybe a, a light DK but I could be wrong um so I bought all that which means I will have uh 1200 meters which is perfect for a sweater so I don't want to do a finger in sweater, I don't think, but uh, I will have to hold a mohair with it. Maybe that's where I'll go back to the little weasel and buy some mohair to go with it. We'll see. I don't think I saw any like grey beige mohair though, like the tilia. There was white and then there were a lot of colours, but no grey. I almost bought some yarn. Well, I didn't, but I was keen to look at it more closely it was a great uh, green yarn but it was high up on the shelves and you had to go up the ladder but i didn't know if i could get up the ladder or if we had to ask for uh, someone in the shop to to do that to touch the yarn or to see the colorways um more closely and so i didn't want to bother anyone and so i didn't but the green was really really pretty and i was thinking for the cowgirl sweater I really want a fingering and mohair for that and I was thinking of making it in neutral actually I could probably use that with a mohair that is a good idea but I was thinking of a neutral but then I saw um, Sarah from two pearls in a pod in her everything I knit video or in their videos she showed her cowgirl sweater in this really pretty green i think she used dirty artichoke in the merino and dusty sea green in the soft silk mohair by knitting for olive together and that, that is stunning i want to i mean i don't know we'll see i'm using a lot of knitting for olive and i kind of want to branch out even though i love the yarn so we'll see 
but anyway so that's what i bought and then the last thing that i bought but that is a, like a very small thing is this and these are needle suppers in the form of tulips i already have some um but i use them all the time and so i had one for the bigger size needles and i got one in the small size needles and that means that this one is also for the small size so like for 2 to 4.5 millimeter needles and those are the types of needles that i use the most i think so yeah i wanted to buy another one so that's all i've bought which is still a lot um this i bought also instead of the law because it ha it was 20 percent off so all of that the four skeins plus this was 74 euros so that was still kind of expensive because i think this was 20 euros and then 20 percent less but it's nice so anyways um i hope you enjoyed um I'm sorry that I wasn't more talkative while outside, but as I said, it was raining and also I'm not comfortable talking <laughs> in front of a camera, in front of people, in the street or wherever. So yeah, um, let me know what you're currently knitting on, what yarn purchase you've made recently, if you've got any ideas of what I could do with this, because right now I'm not too sure um, the next cast on that I will make will be in other yarns that I have already purchased but I've not received yet um, so I'm not sure yet but this is really really pretty I'm really excited so that's it for me today and um, I'll see you in the next one bye